I'm working on a game where you play football as little bug guys. The only problem is, my teammates are about as smart as a bag of rocks. I'm gonna have to do something about this AI. But I don't even know where to start making AI that can play football. Never mind a whole team of AIs that can play football where they interact with each other. I mean, I barely know how to play football. So this really isn't gonna end well. How do I teach a group of mindless bugs how to play a game that I barely know the rules to? Now the main reason I'm doing this is because I want you guys to be able to try out my game and give me feedback on it. But at the moment, you can only play PvP. The AI isn't smart enough to be able to play against you. Maybe I'm a little biased, but I think the game is currently pretty fun to play PvP. And the current AI that I'm using was kind of designed to just be temporary. All it does at the moment is just run up and down the pitch, getting into the right area of the pitch that the ball is in. And when you pass to the AI, you then become in control of that character. So here's what I'm thinking. I take the current AI and improve it a little bit so that they're not running into each other and the positions they're getting into are slightly better. And then I basically make another AI that plays the game like a human would. And then the combination of the two should be very similar to the experience of playing PVP like you can at the moment. So I'm gonna tackle the overall team and then come back to the individual AI because I think that's gonna be the easiest approach. For my simplified bug version of football, I decided that I wanted to have three outfielder positions. I wanted defenders, midfielders, and strikers. Now for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna be using these blue debug spheres to show the ideal positions that the players should be getting into. The first position I decided to handle was the midfielders, since I figured the midfielders should try and stay fairly level with the ball as it moves up and down the pitch. The defenders obviously need to stay a little bit back, that way they can protect the goal. And the strikers, they want to stay a little bit forward so they can receive passes to score easier. One problem I ran into when I was trying to figure out the position where the midfielders should be is as the ball gets closer to the goals, the midfielders really shouldn't be in line with the ball anymore. I found myself almost plotting a graph being like, if the ball is here, the midfielders should be here. And if the ball is here, they should be here. And if it's here, they should be here. And that was when I realized I could just use an animation curve and plot the position that the midfielder should be in based on the overall length of the pitch. So you can see here at the start and at the end of the graph, it's basically completely flattened out, meaning that the midfielders won't run all the way to the end of either side of the pitch. Then if you take a look at the middle section of the graph, you can see that it's scaling linearly, which means that the midfielders will move up and down the pitch almost exactly in line with the ball. The nice thing about doing it this way is I can make the graph steeper, shallower, increase or decrease the dead zones at either end, and it creates an entirely new playstyle for the midfielders. The other great thing about this is all I need to do is tweak these graphs slightly and then apply them to the strikers and the defenders, and that's it. The formation for the whole team is figured out no matter where the ball is on the pitch. The great thing here is, I can come back to this in the future and modify these graphs. Maybe I even make a way for you to control this mid-game, so you can switch them from playing offensive to defensive with just the press of a button. So, we've got all of these positions that the bugs should be running to. But now the next problem is that if there's another bug in the way, they're just going to run into each other. They have no concept of what is around them and how to avoid each other. To fix this, I decided to add in some simple context-based steering. To show you how this works, there are eight lines drawn around each bug. The bugs will prioritize moving in the direction of the longer line. If another bug becomes close to them, the lines on the opposite side will become longer. You can see that when we're harassing this beetle, he's able to average our two positions to help him get away. Now I can do the exact same thing with the formation position, but instead of moving away from that direction, it will move towards that direction. By averaging out the direction to the correct formation position and the direction away from nearby bugs, it creates a really nice avoidance behavior whilst also moving towards the correct position. And there we are, a full team of AI able to move into the correct formation. But they don't actually know how to play football. They just move into football-like positions, or what I assume are football-like positions. Now it's time for the real challenge. Programming an AI that plays football like a human. But how does a human play? I figure there are four things that are basically essential to make this AI as human-like as possible. The first one is being able to tackle the person who has the ball. 
The second one would be once it has the ball to run in the direction of the goal. The third one is to be able to pass to its teammates who are in better positions. And then the final behavior is if the goal is open, it needs to be able to shoot. I think with these four behaviors, I'll be able to create a pretty convincing AI. One of the great things about the context-based steering that I made earlier is I can actually add multiple inputs to it. At the moment, it just takes in a formation position and the bugs around it. But I can also use the context-based steering to prioritize moving towards the ball, moving towards the goal, or even moving to other bugs on the pitch. Now, depending on what the bug should be doing, I can set priority values for each of the different inputs. I'm using a state machine to change between the four behaviors I mentioned earlier, and then anytime it enters a new state, it reevaluates what the priorities should be for that state. Now that the AI can run towards the ball, once it's in range, it's as simple as checking if the ball is being controlled and then tackle in the direction of the person controlling the ball. That's the first state done. I also know that the AI can now run towards the goal, so that's basically done as well. Next, the easiest thing to do is work out how to do the shooting. The way I did this is raycasting in the direction of the goal. If something interrupts the raycast, then the AI knows that it won't be able to score if it shoots. But if nothing interrupts the raycast, then it knows that it can shoot and potentially score. All right, that brings me to the last state, which is passing. And passing just has so many variables involved. I'm going for a fairly simplified approach where I'm not taking in too many different scenarios. I basically want the AI to pass if it can see one of its teammates closer to the goal and that teammate isn't directly marked. Realistically, there would be a bunch of different ways that the AI could pass. Like it could pass backwards, it could pass forwards, it could pass like sideways. But right now, it's just getting in like the basic implementation and then I can just add on top of that in the future. Well, there we go. That's the state machine finished. So the AI can now dribble the ball, it can tackle, it can shoot, it can pass. It can basically do everything. The, the only problem is that this AI has absolutely no reaction times. So it doesn't play like a real person whatsoever, which is really frustrating because most sports, a lot of the time, you're trying to analyze your opponent's next move. But if your opponent moves instantaneously, there's no way to analyze what they're going to do. It becomes really frustrating. This was when I realized I needed to give the AI a kind of artificial reaction time. So instead of running at you and tackling you immediately, it runs at you and then it kind of marks you for a second and then it tackles you. It also means that it won't shoot the second that it picks up the ball and it won't pass the second that it picks up the ball as well. It will take its time like a human would. The funny thing is, even though the AI was beatable, it was just really frustrating to play against, which is something that I hadn't even thought would happen where I'd create something which was unfun to play against because it was difficult, but it was still beatable. And now that the AI has somewhat of a reaction time, there are a few other things that it needs to be able to actually keep up with the player. The main one being sprinting. So I added in three different scenarios in which the AI will choose to sprint. And of course, all of the AI can sprint, not just the one that is pretending to be a human. And finally, the last thing to give the AI the ability to do is, well, to use the bug's ability. But I think that's going to have to wait. This took long enough as it was. And realistically, I don't know if the bugs are going to keep their current abilities. So I don't want to teach the AI how to use the abilities if the abilities might not even exist in the future. And that's about it. That's how I created the AI for a full team of bugs to play football. As well as creating all the AI for the outfielders, I did do a couple other things since last time. One of them was improving the goalie slightly so it can now pass to its teammates. I also added in a heavily requested suggestion from the last video. Now it's obvious which snail trail belongs to which team. And the final thing that I added was a little stamina bar underneath each player, which also acts as an indicator for what team they're on. If you fancy playing against this AI, let me know how you do. There's a link in the description to the bug ball demo that's free on Steam right now. Any feedback that you have would be greatly appreciated, whether that's playing by yourself or playing with friends against the AI. Before I end the video, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone that left a comment on the last video. I got so many really good suggestions. And you might remember as well in the last video, I said I was working on a ladybug and a dragonfly. But making this AI took a little bit longer than I was hoping. So they're going to be coming in the next video. And I really want to dedicate the next video to adding in a bunch of like your suggestions. 
I got so many good ideas for different bugs and abilities that I could add in that I want to dedicate a whole video to that. If you're watching this and you have any fun ideas for bugs or abilities, let me know they might be in the game by the time the next video is released. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.